Hello, hey up and how you diddling? My name is Steve and once again, it's a great big warm welcome from myself to Let's Explore. Right, it's been a long time, isn't it? I think the last video was at that decrepit engine shed, not all that far from here, at uh, near Melbourne in South Derbyshire. But look, look who it is. We've got delighted Dave back. We ain't seen him for a long while, have we? Good We've got... everyone. How are we diddling, David? All right, glad to be out again. I mean, look at the fantastic sky at the back of us. Incredible, isn't it? And hey, here he is, my old schoolmate, look. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing Adam, ain't seen him since Steve, uh, no a ghost sorry, dressed up and uh, chased us over a bridge a few months back, October, and everybody's favourite man in the cloth, the pissed up priest. How are diddling Steve on? Very good, thank you. Good man. Right then, as you can see, we're in this beautiful village centre. Now this place is called Repton. Now you have to be careful how you say that. <laughs> But this is an ancient cross that stands in the centre of this village. It's a, it's a wonderful place. Now, Repton, as you can see on the map, that's where it is. I'm showing it you right now. Uh, was actually one of the, well, an ancient capital of ancient Mercia, an Anglo-Saxon capital. And there were actually kings that were buried here. Now, King Offa, the most famous of those kings, as far as I know, he didn't live here. He lived at Tamworth, which was another historical, um, and the bells are ringing right on time. But that was another capital of ancient Mercia, Tamworth was. He had a, a, ma a mahusive ancient palace built there and what have you. But we're here today. This place was home to kings. Anyway, what we're going to do, we're going to walk around this place a little bit, show you some of its old buildings. It's a wonderful place. But the main part of this video today is going to consist to the south of the village at an ancient deer park. Well, a 13th century deer park anyway, not far from here. Anyway, without any and further ado... Bill. Well, we're gonna, we don't know on the mill. I'm not sure what's actually left of the mill, but we'll, we'll have a look, the old core mill. Anyway, without any further ado. Let's crack on. No, not crack on. Let's go for a nosy. There you go. There, the there you go. Sad, <laughs> it's a jungle out there. It's a jungle. Right, so what I'm gonna do, it's quite windy this morning. Not where I'm stood, I'm actually shielding it, I think. Although I have got this windshield now. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to do some recording and do some narrating because uh, there's quite a bit to talk about here. We'll start here. Look at this. Absolutely beautiful. Now there's a school in there, Repton School, which is around about 450 years old. It's so old. It's a beautiful place. So anyway, let's go on air nose there. Okay, so starting through this beautiful stone arch, we'll make our way into Repton School. Now this is well over 400 years old. It's, a, it's near enough 470 years old now. And it was basically, there was a chap called Sir John Port of Etwall. And on his death in 1557, he actually left funds to create a grammar school, which was then established as the Repton Priory. And for its first 400 years, it was only for boys. Uh, girls weren't allowed to go to this school until the 1970s. And it's quite funny because this Sir John Port of Etwall, um, he actually left these funds for this school to be built under the condition that the students would pray daily for the souls of his family. So, very interesting that. So, very interestingly, the children's author, Roald Dahl, actually attended Repton School in the 1930s and by the sounds of it, he didn't have a very good time because he says here, his experiences are related to his semi-autobiographical book, Boy, in which he describes his negative experience with physical altercations between students. He later stated that he couldn't get over it and has never got over it. So he didn't have a great time, old Roald Dahl, at Repton School. Interesting, that. Also, former Top Gear host Jeremy Clarkson actually went to this school as well. And he actually had to participate in something called hazing. Now, hazing is a, an act where you have to do something degrading, something like that, that you're not going to like. And it says here, I'm actually reading this off Wikipedia, it says Jeremy Clarkson attended the school, later noting that he had suffered extreme hazing by other students, including being plunged into an ice pool and having his trousers cut in half. He was later expelled for drinking and smoking and generally making a nuisance of himself. You can imagine that, actually, can't you? <laughs> Bless him. And on that bombshell, he'd say. So Repton, then, is an ancient capital of Mercia. And Repton School, of course, which was founded in 1557, 
um, was actually established on the site of a 7th century Anglo-Saxon Benedictine Abbey and then in the 12th century an Augustine Priory which it later became and the school site stretches around about 75 acres and incorporates many of the original buildings including the guest chamber and the prior's lodging etc. Now it's quite interesting because up these steps we've just come up you can see all this here these are old parts of ruins of the actual abbey before as you can see now that's absolutely amazing you know kings once walked this place of ancient mercia amazing spellbound lost for words and all that jazz amazing stuff right so what we're doing now i'm taking you down to st Wiston's church which is directly next to the school at repton now this the oldest part of it is anglo-saxon and it's got a beautiful crypt. It's not a big crypt, but we're actually going to get to go down there and see it. It was all open. It was amazing. Now, the crypt, of course, being probably one of the oldest structures in the church, it's undergone a lot of alterations over the years. It's a very old place. Best part of a thousand years, isn't it? I would imagine. And apparently, the actual crypt was built on top of a spring. So I was reading earlier. And apparently, actual baptisms took place down there. Maybe kings were baptised there. Who knows? it's a beautiful old building you know I'm not religious to be honest but I really do appreciate and love these buildings you know the craftsmanship that went into building them is second to none incredible but yeah let's have a look around this place so quite incredibly this crypt apparently was turned into a mausoleum for King Ethelbold of Mercia during his lifetime and King Wiglaf and his grandson, St. Wigstan, or Wigston, who he named the church after, uh, were also buried in the crypt. Now, I didn't know that whilst I was down in the crypt earlier. I didn't know that until I got home and started reading about it. <laughs> but it's thought that the royal bodies were first buried in the ground to decompose before their bones were actually interred into the crypt, which is incredible. I'd have appreciated the crypt a hell I mean don't get me wrong I appreciated it when I was down there but that would have really given me uh, me imagination a, a run for its money had I have known that when we were down there anyway without any further ado let's actually go down into this crypt what a great little structure and what amazing history once again Right, so we're now in St Wiston's Church and Dave has just actually been down to the crypt, haven't you, buddy? Yes, I have. <laughs> Hello. There you go, you heard it here first. Right, let's go and have a look down the crypt then. Beautiful old uh, tomb here, look at that. Amazing, isn't it? What incredible history this is. It feels strange recording in here. Look how warm these steps are. Wow. This is so old down here, folks. Very narrow as well. Wow, can't believe we're back down here. I know, amazing, isn't it? So there's not an awful lot to see, but this structure is so old. Look at these pillars. What a privilege to be able to come down here. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely incredible. This floor is so old, Steve. Brilliant, yeah. Amazing. Do you know what's even more incredible? Yeah, look at the carving on the pillars. I know, so intricate, mate. Do you know what's even more incredible, though? Look at these steps, how worn they are in places. There's a few people down these steps. Oh, it's amazing, mate. Absolutely incredible. It's so, so old. Amazing. <laughs>
Now, what we're doing now, we're walking down this really old lane here. Now, I think this used to be access for an old corn mill at Repton. And is there anything left of it? I don't know. But one thing I do know is this footpath is going to carry on up to the old ancient deer park that we're hoping to get to. But we'll go here first. If there's no, there's notice. There's usually some sort of earthwork. Now, what's interesting is the mill that was here until the middle part of the 20th century before they demolished it. I think the actual lead to it was built in the 1600s uh, by the Harper Crew family, I think. I might be wrong on that. No pun. Right, so fascinatingly, if that's ever been pronounced that way, we think we might be at the old mill, but we really can't go in there because we've got livestock. Uh, we've got a pig. And I've never seen a pig like that in my life. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and zoom in on this brick and stonework for you, because Railway I'm presuming, sleepers. yacht mate. Railway sleepers. Yeah, that, yeah, holding the fence up. That to me has got mill written all over it, just by the look of the actual stonework. Look, look at like this. The race there looks of it going in. Yeah. Right. Sorry about the the brightness. I can't help it. Look at that. That's got mill written all over it, isn't it? It's got to be. That's got to be part of the old mill. And, you know, even here, I mean, yeah, for me, these are really old. So the lane that we walked down, of course, for me, was 100% access for the mill. And for me, this is the old path. So this is a public footpath, by the way. So we'll go up here. We need to head this way anyway. Let the Indiana Jones in commence. So what we've got, that stonework I've just been showing you, I uh, can't get great footage of that but you've clearly got the lead here. Now, me and Adam are just checking this out. This is amazing. Look at this. Incredible mill lead, which could have been built in the 17th century. It could be very old, but I'm not certain on that. But look at this. We have got some seriously old stonework. Yeah, it does, mate. Look at this. So, Repton Corn Mill was up ahead of us over there that's where the pigs are and then of course i mean look at this this is apps i love this old stonework i really do somebody's been uh, carving the their initials into See, this, it this looks to me like dave look this there's an archway here mate there's an arch. so yeah i think this is a sluice gate here yeah yeah so, look at the metal yeah yeah look both sides steve metal sluice gate yeah, yeah. metal there no, this this is a there's a sluice there's a sluice here, mate. So for me, there was a slider here, a sluice gate, and there's what remains of an archway down here. Yeah, just shift that out of the way. Let's have a a mini moves. Yeah, that's a the remains of an archway there, isn't it? Oh, yeah, that, that and as you, as you can see, you've got old metal work. Oh, fantastic, fantastic piece of a nosy in archaeology there. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Is there writing here? Yeah, someone's been uh, carving their initials into it, bud, eh? Right then, so we're now walking down this path here. And we've just had a really interesting conversation, haven't we, Dave? Yeah. With this dog walker, and he gave us some really interesting information about some willow trees that line the side of the mill race or brook behind us down there. These willow trees were used by a basket weaver, and they'd go and take parts of the trees down, cut them down and you know, weave baskets out of it. That's what willow was used for a lot of the time. Very bendy, woody material, isn't it? But as Dave's just pointing out, now up here somewhere, we've just been told by that lovely gentleman walking his uh, dog, that the mill pond was up here, uh, or still is here. Now this is a public footpath that's existed for probably a very long time. And as Dave's just said, you know, the miller most likely walked the same path two, three hundred years ago, you know, or used his e-scooter, I don't know, to, to actually open, you know, the, the sluice gates and to decide how much to open the sluice gates, depending on how much water was needed on that particular day because of, you know, rising or low water levels, etc. But that same chap, I should have recorded him, to be honest, I should have asked if he didn't mind, but he was saying that he'd been speaking to a bloke in recent years who's got 150 years of family history 
in this village. And this, this old chap was telling this dog walker about the actual mill and the fact that the bloke used to probably walk up and down this path as well. Amazing stuff. But what we're going to do now, we might see the mill pond because there may be traces of sluice gates. But then after that, we need to go and look for some really old 17th century structures. And I've got a feeling they're not far away. Let's go and have a nose there. Right then, so we're not far away from the structure that we've actually come to see. Now, the other three, they've gone off on their own little exploration somewhere. I don't know where they've gone. I've just marched off doing my own thing. But down here, we should have a structure that was built in the 1600s. I think it was, it's very old. Uh, I'm not sure if it was meant to be an old summer house or an old stable, and here it is. It doesn't look like part of an old stable to me. Look at that beauty, but it could have been used as a stable at some point, I really don't know. This is fascinating, it is so, so old. Look at that. And it's actually built into this little hillside here. I've never, I've never come across anything like it, to be honest with you. Well, maybe that structure over near Baddersley Enzo a couple of years ago. Let me show you around it, it's fantastic. So it's gorgeous, isn't it? It's so pretty. What a beautiful structure, you know, slowly being swallowed by nature as per usual. But it's so grand. I mean, like I say, the write-up online does suggest it could have been used as a stable. We'll go in there in a sec. It could well have been. I really don't know. But we really do not build things like this anymore, folks. Let's go in here. Wow, wonderful vaulted ceiling. It's always quite special to see them, isn't it? But it is so old. And just look how thick the walls are where the old windows are. I mean, look at that. Look how thick they are. <laughs> we really do not build anything like it anymore. Red brickwork there. Amazing. So it's quite interesting at the back here because it's almost like that's part of the slope behind us. So is that natural rock there? Strange. I mean, we have got the brickwork here. Beautiful structure. It's, it's quite unique. I've never seen anything like it, to be honest with you. Amazing. Beautiful that, absolutely stunning. And Dave's just joined me as well. You can come out, Dave, don't hide, don't shy away. Amazing, isn't it? Absolutely. Reminds me of Gunhill House. Yeah, it is a bit like Gunhill House at Whittick. Just look how the trees are growing out of it now. This was, this was someone's pride and joy once. Someone, to detail. yeah, Keystone yeah. as well. Somebody spent a lot of money on this. Now, I think it was, it was probably like some sort of a summer house once to do with the lake down there and then maybe they have stuck horses in it in the past at some point, because it does say on one write-up that it's an old, part of an old stable, but it, it doesn't speak, it doesn't say stable to me. Only if, you, I mean, that is big enough to get an horse through, unless later on when it were no longer used as a summer house, etc., then they came and stuck Dobbin in it. I don't know, but incredible, mate. Let's go and see what else there is. Oh, and I just want to thank Lucy Walker for getting in touch with me and telling me about that place because I knew nothing of it. I'd been planning to come to Repton for quite some time, but I knew nothing of that. So if you're watching, thank you very much. Right, so whilst Dave is busy snapping his photographs of that last structure I've just shown you, and I don't know where the other pair are, I assume they're with Dave now. I've just come for a walk around to see if I can find anything else. And down in this bit of a bowl shaped area in this woodland that I found more stonework and that looks really old as well so we've got to get down here haven't we <laughs> and I'm sure there's an easier way down Ooh. but I don't do easy do I <laughs> oh wow hey this was a big structure maybe this was the main house I don't know all will become clear in a minute now just look at that now for me, we are inside a cellar. I might be totally wrong, but that is the start of a vaulted ceiling. So we're beneath a property that once stood here 
got to be. This is absolutely fascinating, beyond fascinating for me. And as you can see, this wall carries on. That would have gone all the way down, I'm sure of it. That is incredible. I'd sooner find things like this than full houses, to be honest. I don't know why. But yeah, definitely vaulted ceiling there, the start of it. But what is this going to be then? Is this going to be more cellars? Unreal. Wow, I'm liking the look of this. This is so, so old. This is centuries old. Wow. Unbelievable. Yes. More vaulted ceilings here, look. See that? So, there were floors above us, going quite high up, I imagine. This is, uh, I'm a bit starstruck, if that's the right way of putting it. This is incredible. Wow. Snowdrops here as well, look. Amazing. Wow, wow, wow. So, yeah, so this indeed was an underground passage then. You can see it, there would have been steps there. There'd have been a stairway here, if you can imagine. Stairway, in my opinion, coming down, there's your door. Takes you underneath into that, that would have been like a little tunnel, if you like, where the barrel arching is, and a passageway down here. That is absolutely fascinating. I wasn't, I was not expecting I was not expecting to find that. This stonework's gorgeous as well. So, so old. What a find. What a find. And just in front of all that, you've got some evidence of old foundations, perhaps, just here. So, it's a wonderful site, this is. Amazing. Absolutely incredible never found anything like this in fact the closest I'd say that I'd come to with anything like this was Norris Hill Hall but that was more well known about I think right so before we go we've just showed you them amazing structures in that woodland but we really wanted to find just to finish the video off these sluice gates now this here that's an ornate pond that was part of Repton uh, deer park back in the day so the first structure we found in the trees would have overlooked this I imagine but on this side, we're pretty sure on this side of the, there's a bank, big bank here. That is more or less to do with think. We think that's the mill pond, basically. And we might be onto something there because we've got a mechanism here. So there was a sluice gate down in this hole here. So we have indeed got the actual recesses in the brickwork here, in the engineering brickwork, you see that groove there, so that's where there'd have been a sluice there. Uh, this, of course, has been moved out of the way. Uh, there'd have been like a, there'd have been a cog here, if you like, and this would have lifted up the gates that would have been here to let water out down here. So I imagine that in this vicinity somewhere here, there would have been, there's probably some stonework or something, but I don't know until I have a look. This is one of them noses today where I wasn't expecting an awful lot. I was expecting some it, but not a lot. And we've got a bit more than we thought we were going to get, I think. Ah, so, right, I'm actually, bloody hell. <laughs> just, uh, just watch that hole there, mate. Ah, yeah, uh, there's one of them, uh, yeah, okay. There's, a, there's, a, there's an old, there's a pump in here. This is a more modern affair, concrete. We're not really interested in that, but there is, a, there is an old pump beneath here but amazingly and I've got to watch where I'm going as per so just showing you that that sluice gate up there and that is where the water came out so really nice stonework there look like a weir bank if you like and it's separating these two ponds this one being for the mill of course the other pond in there as I've just shown you that's a more ornamental affair but yeah there is it, there it is. Beautiful that, we love out like that at Less Explore, don't we? Absolutely. That's so picturesque. Right then, what do we reckon to that end, gents? Absolutely. 
absolutely brilliant. Yeah, yeah fantastic. fantastic. Fantastic nose there. I tell you what, it ended up much better than I thought it were going to, to be honest yeah. with you. Yeah. Yeah. We've seen, I've just said on camera, actually, we've seen more than I thought we were going to see, to be honest with you. Yeah, I like that. They were surprised if they would. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely. And I'm going to show you something now, whilst you're watching. The picture that you're looking at, that's me. That's me when I was five or six years old. And the photograph you're looking at now is of Adam. And he's not changed, has he, look? Not a bit. Not really, apart not from the bit. woolly hat. The woolly hat, Or yeah. is that your hair? We can never tell. Your hair's that black. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great that, nose, eh? Oh, fantastic nose. I mean, for me, it's... I still got it in my head, walking down the path that we was told the miller walked down every day. Yeah, yeah. To open the sluice gate to control the water. We've now found the sluice gate. And the handle thing, he would have wound. I know, it's, it's amazing. 200, 300 years later. It's absolutely amazing. Where he was, we followed his footsteps. It's, it's just amazing what we've got still That's left to discover. You know, it's like that thing we've just found, that, that structure in that bowl shape in the ground. I didn't know that was there. I'd seen a structure on the map. That's all I knew. That's all I knew. So I just went and walk over there whilst Dave was taking his lovely photos and... Hey presto, come across what I'm pretty certain are um, below ground cellars. cellars yeah. Could have been a coal storage bit as well, we're not sure. But yeah, absolutely fantastic to have you. I've missed Rare Rob today, actually. Shame yeah. he couldn't come, but he's otherwise occupied. Yeah. But yeah, amazing stuff. Before you do, don't forget, it's jungle out there. It is, exactly. right, on that bombshell. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed that video. Bye. Please like, subscribe and share. And we will see you again. Ta-ra, me ducks. Bye-bye. <laughs>